What is going on you guys, AK40 Kevin here in the Gamer Heaven. Today we're going to be going over all the different ways that you can make full-time income, make a living playing video games. We're going to cover if these options are actually viable, how hard they are to actually enter and get lucrative to where you're making enough to pay one month's expenses. Then we're also going to cover long-term sustainability. All right, let's jump right into it. Alrighty guys, so the first one we're going to start with would be being a YouTube content creator or streamer, whether that's on Twitch, Facebook Gaming, Mixer has now uh, been integrated into Facebook Gaming, YouTube also have, has a live gaming streaming platform. This one comes to mind pretty frequently because it's getting more and more common. So something we need to cover real quick though is that less than 1% of Twitch streamers make enough to cover one month's expenses. So their rent, their food, their utilities, gas, car payment, etc. I would recommend if you are going to get into streaming uh, to start multi-streaming, so you're on so you stream or multicast to Facebook gaming, Twitch, and YouTube Live. Uh, that's very easy to do. It's free in OBS or open broadcaster service, which is what I'm using right now to record this video here. That way you're discoverable on multiple platforms because discoverability on Twitch is literally non-existent. They they don't have any kind of SEO or search engine optimization to find new content creators. And they don't really want, they have no initiative or no incentive to want to get new content creators, new Twitch streamers discovered because uh, they're getting paid by their partners and a little bit by their affiliates. They don't really get much from their affiliates and their affiliates don't really get much. So that's the next thing is that on Twitch, there is a affiliate, which I'm going to have a separate video as to why you should never, ever, ever get Twitch affiliate. It's very easy to obtain. You only need 50 followers and a handful of stream minutes. Very easy to get, but you should not. Uh, partner, that's a more viable option, but it takes quite a quite a grind to get to partner, especially, you know, like I said, starting from zero, Twitch is a very hard platform to grow on. I would recommend if you have your heart set on Twitch to start a YouTube channel or something like that, and then direct your traffic over there to that platform. Now, how you're going to get paid as a streamer would be your subscriptions. Very minuscule. It's like $5 for, it's $5 for a subscription. You actually only get uh, a little bit less than half of that. You get about $2. You can also collect donations, which is great. Bits is a made up currency that doesn't really do a whole hell of a lot. That's basically a way of Twitch taking money out of your pocket for something that they're not doing at all. Uh, like you're the one creating this entertaining content and bits take a portion of that. So I would recommend leading your viewership to just giving you direct donations through PayPal or something like that. So you keep 100% of the commish minus PayPal's little transaction fee or whatever. And then also you'll get a little bit of ad revenue from the pre-roll and midstream ads that happen. Now, YouTube, you're going to get paid from your monetization from your Google AdSense ads, which are the videos that play before, uh, during a video that's 10 minutes or longer. And also you can opt to click a box to have them play after your video. I don't know why content creators would even do that. Nobody's going to stick around and watch your stupid World of Tanks video play after watching your video. Uh, but I would highly recommend if you are going to be a YouTube content creator or a Twitch streamer that you monetize your channel through multiple venues. I'm going to have a separate video posted today with seven ways to monetize your YouTube channel as my tiny channel here makes more income than a lot of channels that are three, four, five times larger than my channel because they have no they have no business background. They don't understand how to actually make currency from the entertainment that they're providing. So, so I would say if you are going to be a YouTube content creator or a Twitch streamer that you also monetize that through multiple venues. So whether that's creating merch, whether that's having affiliate links in your affiliate links in the description of your videos and your stream. So that way, you know, you can recommend the equipment that you use, your mouse, keyboard, the camera, the microphone, stuff like that. Uh, also look for sponsorships if you when you do start getting traction. Now, there is pretty good discoverability on YouTube and Facebook gaming right now. So literally anybody could start as long as you are in a game that people are watching, but it's not oversaturated. You're entertaining or informative or both, or you have a unique skill set. You're doing painting murals or assembling Legos or doing something unique, or you're just really funny or you're really handsome or really beautiful or something like that. That does help. Um, you know, just doing something unique that's actually going to want people to log in and watch you or you're just really good at games like shroud and tfue and stuff like that but it really is not sustainable and i'll explain why you can get taken off those platforms very easily for very minuscule things that you either did not mean to do or you blatantly did not do at all you can go through a review process to appeal strikes and stuff like that but right now with all the dmca stuff going on 
Uh, granted, if you're just starting now, you don't have to worry about deleting all your old VODs. It might have copyrighted music and stuff like that. But also, like the terms of, the terms of service over there in Twitch are kind of a wreck. They are not really set in stone. They're a case-by-case -case basis. So, like if you're a male streamer and you're wearing a tank top and you accidentally show like a quarter inch of your nipple or something, you can get banned off the platform. And there's streamers like Alinity that can football punt their cat across the room and feed it shots and stuff. And uh, a streamer a couple days ago, I just covered a video yesterday, uh, took off all her clothes and spread the eagle, so to speak. She's a patriot. And uh, she got a three-day ban. But there's people that are banned for 90 days for dropping the word like simp and virgin and stuff like that. So the fact is you're working for a company that has very loose guidelines as far as to what you can and cannot get away with. And also goes by a case-by-case -case basis that seems to push favoritism, to be quite literally honest. YouTube, it's not quite as bad, but Twitch is... Pretty, pretty horrendous. I've been extremely skeptical about trying to make any cash with Twitch just because I don't really see it to be a consistent or viable long-term source of income. But hey, just mind your P's and Q's and wear a nice turtleneck when you stream. We're going to move into being a competitive esports athlete or somebody that plays, you know, competitive Fortnite, Call of Duty, Apex Legends, stuff like that. Uh, so you could work directly for Activision as part of their Call of Duty League, where you are actually a team member. Uh, so you're getting paid a small commission from Activision, plus you also get paid for win victories and tournaments. Uh, e each place gets a different monetary reward. Obviously, the better you do, the more you're going to get paid, but you are still going to get paid a small sum just for being a competitive esports athlete not to mention there are sponsorships that come along with that g fuel absolutely loves to sponsor esports e sweats out there um obviously whatever controller or keyboard and mouse you're using they'll probably offer you a sponsorship so scuff or corsair razor HyperX, logitech etc so that, that's another layer or stream of income for you barrier to entry is relatively high you obviously need to be very good you probably need to be in the top one to three percent competitively uh, they do look at statistics like your KD ratio in Call of Duty, stuff like that. Not to mention, you'll probably have to try out by doing a couple of trial competitions or tournaments where you play against some of the lower lower tiers of competitive gamers to prove yourself. Kind of think of it like a college football player trying to get drafted into the NFL. You have to be very good, but when you do, there's some good money in it. But then, once you work for a company, unlike being a Twitch streamer or YouTuber, which yes, you still have to abide by the rules and terms of service and codes of conduct and stuff like that so you don't get banned from that platform and cut off. Off that income stream it's a little bit higher when you're part of a company like activision or epic games or something like that and you're a you know professional player for them you have to be extremely professional you can't be getting pictures of you taking you know hammer drunk out in town stuff like that um it's gonna shed bad light on that company and you will eventually eventually get let go from that partnership and coincidentally probably all your sponsors as well so you're cutting off all your streams of income that related to being a professional, professional, professional esports athlete. So, is being a professional esports athlete long term or viable in the long run? Is it something you're going to make a career out of and do for decades? Probably not. I mean, if anything happens to your, uh, you get arthritis and you can no longer claw grip your mouse or you can no longer uh, flick the sticks as quick or your eyesight starts to go or you just get older, you don't have the co cognitive function to have the hand eye coordination anymore, not to mention. Each generation of gamers is getting better at video games. These kids are spending more time indoors, like going outside and playing and, you know, busting your ankles, doing kickflips on a skateboard and stuff really isn't a thing anymore. So kids are playing more video games and they're just naturally becoming better at video games through generations of breeding stallion like gamers that are literally bred to be good gamers moving away from that now we're going to talk about being a professional game tester yes you would make a living technically playing video games generally a game tester only makes between 25 and 45 thousand dollars a year which really isn't a whole lot depending on your geographic area your cost of living and whatnot not to mention you're not really playing i'm, I'm not going to say fun games you could be working on a fun game but you're literally looking for bugs and glitches now granted technically every gamer nowadays is a game tester because triple a titles even like cyberpunk and cold war have bugs and glitches in them and it's kind of up to the the player base us the average consumer that just wants a polished product to play and enjoy with our friends actually is technically an unofficial game tester now which is weird and we're not getting paid for it unless you have like a youtube channel or something and you point out these funny bugs and glitches and make compilations or something like that do i think being a video game tester would be uh, long term and sustainable I would say kind of no, because you're only testing specific games. It's almost like being a contractor when that project's done. 
you don't really know when the next project is going to be there unless you work for a major company like Blizzard or Activision where you're testing all their major AAA titles because they constantly release a new Call of Duty every year or you work for EA that releases like Madden every year or something like that, then that would be pretty consistent. But if you're working for a small indie company that's making some you know game with a seven-person development crew or something like that uh, and you're the one tester, when you're done, you're kind of done there. So... I, I would be very cautious about what company you get into bed with, so to speak. Last but certainly not least, you could be an individual partner for a specific game that's a IPO or initial, initial public offering. It's a new type of game uh, or it's a new beta game or alpha game where you're part of the closed alpha, closed beta, and you are basically the liaison, the middleman, the uh, face or entertainer, the content creator that is showing the public early release footage for a game. So for example, Dead Matter is a new upcoming zombie game. It's been off to a really rough start. I have videos on that and whatnot, but it seems quite promising. And they do have a private partnership where you're only allowed to mention and say certain things about the game, more or less. You're, you know, a partner for that company. So you're one of the few people that can actually stream content and put content on YouTube about that game. Uh, you do have to sign an NDA that you will not disclose certain things that go on behind the scenes about the game. And uh, most likely there's a lot of limitations as to what you can actually talk about. But that is definitely an option and you could potentially play a game that you might really like and get paid to be the middleman or liaison middlewoman uh, between the community and the actual developer. So is being a closed alpha or beta representative long-term sustainable? I would say no, because it's just an individual game. And once that thing's released to the public and everyone can stream and talk about it and say whatever they want, and there's uh, public reviews out and major media companies like IGN and GameSpot that are talking about it, uh, your opinion and your, your word and your expertise on that project are really no longer viable. So out of all these, which one would I recommend? That would be none and all. Let me explain. So I would not run out and quit all, quit your day job and quit your side job and all this stuff and just specifically pursue these goals. I would try to treat it like a part-time job to where you actually sit down for hours a day uh, like I do, I sit down for hours a day. I look, I go through my keyword tags. I try and make thumbnails. Uh, I shoot videos, edit footage. It takes quite a damn while. And slowly I'm actually gaining traction. I'm about to hit 4,000 subscribers here in the near future. And like I said, I am monetized. I have four streams of income that come from my YouTube channel, which is pretty awesome. But I, I'm going to say you should treat it like a part-time job. Do not quit your full-time job to make this a full-time job. Yes, you'll have more time and energy to spend specifically on growing your YouTube and your Twitch or becoming that esports athlete that you want to be, but it, there's a high percentage that it won't work out, unfortunately, for you. And that's not even dependent on your skill level or how good of a content creator you are. It comes down to a lot of randomized factors like, you know, algorithms trying to find you in Google and stuff like that, or, you know, how people perceive you on Twitch and stuff like that. And then when I say all, go for all of them, they kind of all go in conjunction. So if you're going to be an esports athlete or something like that, people are going to know about you in the gaming community and whatnot. So it makes sense for you to start a YouTube channel of your best kill montages or to go on Twitch and answer live Q and A's about how to snap aim with a mouse and stuff like that. And also, as long as it's not a private tournament, you can stream a lot of these events live and stuff like that. And you'll get a ton of views because you're kicking ass in a live tournament and stuff like that. The whole game tester one, that doesn't really fit in with being a streamer and competitive esports gamer. That's kind of over here. That's an actual job job like a legit work for a company sitting down testing games. But hey, that's a viable option. If you want to play video games for a living, that's definitely an option. And those jobs do exist. I've actually been browsing online for those jobs and I found listings uh, local here in Florida as well as jobs that you can work remotely. Uh, a lot of jobs are kind of remote right now with the pandemic and whatnot. All the potential ways that you could make money playing video games, enough money to live on, um, maybe not comfortably at first, but eventually. See, these things are very not linear. So you don't make crap when you're starting out on Twitch, YouTube, uh, a low level game tester, a low tier professional esports athlete. They don't really get paid hardly anything, especially if you're not winning tournaments because you're playing top tier sweats and whatnot. But then once you get good, then you make more than an average amount of money. It's, it's weird. It's like you don't make anything and then, wow, you get discovered or you take off or you become really good at the game you're playing and you make substantially more than the average American. So it, it's not very linear at all. And uh, also keep in mind, the majority of these that I mentioned, besides maybe the game tester, don't really offer you know medical, dental benefits, retirement, stuff like that, because you're technically... Uh, 
almost entrepreneurial at that point. You're almost self-employed. So you need to set aside money for, you know, your healthcare coverage and stuff like that. Um, just something to keep in mind that your expenses will be higher because of that. And I think that is going to do it, guys. If you have any questions whatsoever about the topic that I covered today, drop them in the comment section below. I do actually read and respond to all my comments. If this was informative for you guys, please consider subscribing and giving a little attention to that notification bell so you're aware when new videos come online. Like I said, I am going to be uploading a video today of the seven ways to monetize your YouTube channel. So just as a little bit of a teaser, I'll drop a couple out there real quick. Of course, you have your Google AdSense ads. You have affiliate programs such as Amazon Associates. You can drive traffic to more premium videos on something like Patreon. And you can create unique merch. I'm not talking about beanies and shirts and stuff like that because everybody does that. But maybe custom printed mouse pads or, you know, me personally, I design one-off custom controllers, pictures on screen here. I have a small business doing that. So obviously, you know, I have a link to that and like my Twitch and my YouTube and stuff like that. And traffic actually gets driven to that business from people discovering my YouTube videos, which is really cool. I hope you guys have a fantastic afternoon and I hope to see you guys in the next video. Peace.